We're given three points, A, B, and C, and then we have a list of four things that we need to do. Um, part A asks us to find the length of each side of the triangle. So what I'm going to do first, there's a blank graph down here at the bottom. I'm going to plot my points because it helps me just to make sure that um, everything is working out the way that it's supposed to. So I'm going to plot A, which is at 0, 4. B is at 4, 5. And C is at 1, 0. So here's my triangle. And now let's work on part A, which is to find the length of each side. So uh, my three sides are AB, BC, and CD. I'm sorry, CA. Okay, so now we have to do the distance formula three times. And I'm going to write the distance formula um, right underneath the question for part A just so that it's here. Okay, so for AB, I have to use points A and B. All right, so I would plug in, um, let's see, 4 minus 0 and 5 minus 4. And this comes out to be the square root of 17. If you put that in your calculator, you'll get 17 under the radical. Um, it doesn't simplify, so we're just going to leave it how it is. For side BC, I have 1 minus 4 for my x2 minus x1, and then 0 minus 5. This comes out to be the square root of 34, after you simplify. And then my last side, CA, Um, I would have 1 minus 0 for my first set of parentheses and 0 minus 4 for the second set of parentheses. And that comes out to be the square root of 17 also. So I'm going to go on my picture here and I'm going to label my three sides. So that was the square root of 17, BC is the square root of 34, and then AB was the square root of 17. Alright, so we're done with part A. Part B asks us to classify the triangle by angles and side length. So based on my work from part A, I can already tell that this is an isosceles triangle because it has two equal sides. So I know that that part is done, but I do need to check on the angles. And in order to do that, we're going to use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So what I'm going to do is add A squared and B squared, and I'm going to see how it relates to C squared. So is it equal to, greater than, or less than? So the first thing we need to do is go back to part A. I'm going to put a star next to BC because that is my biggest side. That means that when I plug this in, I'm going to plug in BC for the C value. So I have the square root of 34 as my C value, so squared, question mark. And then A squared and B squared are actually the same number, so it kind of doesn't matter which one is which. Okay, now the nice thing is that the squares and the square roots cancel each other out. So I end up with 34 and then 17 plus 17. And if you add 17 plus 17, you actually get 34. So what that means is that since the two sides are equal, that means this is a right triangle. So it's a right triangle, and we decided from our answers in part A that it's isosceles because it has two equal sides. Part C asks us to determine the perimeter. So I'm going to take um, my three sides, which are the square root of 17, the square root of 34, and the square root of 17, and I'm going to add all three. Um, I'm going to add the two that are like radicals, and what I'm really doing is adding the number in front, which I'm going to write in there as like an invisible one. So I have two square root of 17s. And then I just have the square root of 34 by itself, so it just kind of gets added along, and that's my perimeter. Last, I'm asked to determine the area of the figure. The area of the figure, since it's a triangle, the formula is 1 half base times height. Since this is a right triangle, and by the way, my right angle would be across from the largest side, so that's how I know the right angle is at A. Um, when you're looking at a right triangle, the base and the height for your formula will be the two legs, so the, the two smallest sides. So that means that my base 
and it doesn't matter which is which, I'll make the base um, AC and then I'll make the height AB. Oops, I wrote B instead of H. Okay, so now I just have to plug everything in. So this is one half, the base is the square root of 17 and the height is also the square root of 17. If I multiply the square root of 17 times itself, I get just 17 because it's, it's really like I have the square root of 17 squared. So my answer is just the number 17. So what I really have here is half of 17. And if you divide 17 by two, you can leave it like this, that would be fine. Or you could write that it's 8.5. So two answers that would be acceptable would be 17 over two or 8.5.